Martin triggers my OCD every week if we have two games by not going chronologically. So um, to start with, uh, we're going to cast our minds back to the game that was many days and much alcohol ago. Um, so game number one, Queen's Park Rangers at Loftus Road. Uh, one nil win secured by Taylor Howard bellis uh, from a set piece with a restricted view for most people. So Steve, I know you were there. How was the ludicrously expensive trip and uh, could you see anything and was it worth the money? Uh, it was fine for me. Um, I haven't been to Loftus Road quite a few times now. Um, you kind of get used to what whereabouts in that away end is is half decent to see anything and where isn't. Um, so basically, if you want um, prime seat, then up upper tier front couple of rows or basically anywhere in the lower tier is your best bet. So I, I went for the much cheaper lower tier, only £31. What a bargain that was, by the way, um, rather than the 38 quid that people had to, had to fork out in the upper tier, which is frankly absolutely outrageous. Um, but no, it was... It was good. Um, we were. It was weird. the The first half was kind of a little bit end to end, without either side really creating anything of any of any yeah. note. It was just one one of those games where um, QPR had a little bit of energy um, and kind of channeled it all through their best player, Elias Chair, uh, yeah. down the left down the left flank. And in fairness to him, we basically couldn't get the ball off him all afternoon. Um, and fair, so yeah, fair play to him for that. But fortunately, final ball, whether it's from him or um, or any of the other um, QPR sort of wide players, uh, wasn't great. Um, partially, probably because Lyndon Dykes um, was doing his best best impression of a statue and wasn't really uh, moving too much. Um, Absolutely, to get, get on the end of anything. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't great, and. Um, and also, we I think we defended we defended that final third pretty well as we as we kind of have been doing recently. Um, we seem to have learned um, learned what we need to do on that front. Although I will still continue banging the drum of stop the cross um, until I'm blue in the face. But yeah. Um, yeah, that I think that was probably the only frustration that we actually let them put those crosses in uh, because arguably a better side would have had somebody. Um, getting it, getting themselves on the end of them, and then we could have been in a little spot of bother. But get the goal right on half time. Um, Howard Bellis with the freedom of the QPR six yard box. Um, quite how how we end up with that much room. I mean, I guess QPR's league position probably probably tells you the answer to that, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I, t- I tell you what, I when I, when I saw that goal, it, if you watch all the replays, the defender that's supposed to be marking him somehow ends up on the deck. And he's about he's ten nowhere, yards away, isn't he? Yeah. But I haven't se- I haven't seen a TV angle that proves anything, whether he slipped or whether Howard Bellis threw him over or whatever. Um, I just yeah. Obviously, I just and there, w- there weren't any appeals either from it from any defenders. So I don't no. know if the, the guy who was supposed to be tracking him just just slipped. But yeah, he, he ends ends up with so much room, and um, he kind of almost did well to nearly miss um from the position he was in from i mean from where from where i was stood it it looked as if he completely shanked it but it's only on replays where actually he's, he's caught it quite nicely and it's um gone right in the corner um second half what i think what what pleased most of us the most was that we kept on attacking and trying to score the second goal we didn't yeah. just sit sit in on the lead where a side like qpr much like huddersfield um when you know that there's only probably one or two avenues where they can score, um, if you sit in, then you run the risk of them being able to a um, little bit of luck, bit, little bit of luck, maybe a little bit of um, of quality play, and all of a sudden they find a goal from somewhere, and um, and you you're then kind of scrapping to keep hold of the game. But um, we didn't do that. We were we were still positive, looking to. I mean, like, still largely hitting them on the counter attack. I, th- I thought for the most part, but yeah, uh, we looked a lot more effective. Um, should have won by more, really. Shea Adams has has missed one absolute absolute stinker. Having <laughs> having done the hard work in chase, yeah. chasing the um, chasing the defender's Does clearance down, down yeah. um, gets himself in on goal, and I mean, he's got basically the whole goal to aim at, and decides that flicking the ball with the outside of his right foot uh, to try and lob. Um, Asmir Begovic, who's about six foot eight, um, was the was the best move. It's like mm, just decision making in, in that final 
in that final um, final moment is basically why Shea Adams is kind of the player he is in that he's probably too good for this level, but not enough, not good enough for the um, for the level above. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was that was that was the frustrating thing that we didn't take those couple of clear cut chances. Shea Charles had another one um, uh, slightly earlier, I think, set up by Fraser, um, yeah. where ultimately. Begovic has probably had a fit, relatively simple save by his standards to make. I'd like Shea Charles to probably hit it in the near post because I think um, the keeper's probably then wrong-footed. Uh, but that's uh, maybe picking ha- picking hairs on a uh, for a guy who's... Yeah, I mean, to um, be fair to Shea not, Charles, he's, he's yeah, not he's, a goal he's scorer, not is he? Gonna, yeah, he's not one you're going to pick no. to score goals regularly. So, um, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but then he, he obviously then went and got himself sent off um two yeah i was going to pro- proper was take gonna... one for the team yellows those those were um the first the first yeah, one I, gonna... I don't mind um the the area that's in it's it's in a they're moving into a dangerous area um but the second the second one i just kind of think just let him run it's literally on the edge of their area um so you've got another 85 yards 85 90 yards to run into um, yeah, there was there was no was real say, danger there. It, it just felt unnecessary, really. But it's it's instinct, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I was going. I was going. I mean, if anything, funnily enough, I thought the other way round. I thought the the first yellow card he was running into Bednarek, um, you know, the, whoever it was that he, he impeded. But yeah, the, the second one was interesting. I was, was going to say, Alfie, it, it it strikes me in this league that you can you can get away with some tactical fouls um, if you're a little bit subtle about it. <laughs> Um, does does Shay Charles need to work on that a little bit because um, the clothes line across the throat? You're not going to get yeah. away with that. Are I you? think he, he got away with one yesterday. I think um, to be fair, but I think they, they said that the lads actually applauded him in the dressing room at full time, which I think is, you know, maybe a little bit of an over sort of overzealous reaction. But at the end of the day, it was the right thing to do at the time. Um, I, I actually agree with you. I think that the first one felt a little bit pointless. I thought the Jan Bennett was going to come across to his left and cover that one, and the second one looked a little more dangerous. But I suppose you can see it differently. But I mean, it feels weird um, talking about the QPR game, which was what like seven days ago. Um, I'm sort of yeah. operating on a on a one day brain basis at the moment, where I'm sort of receiving information <laughs> and discarding it by next, you know, nine a.m. next morning. Um, but I thought it was, yeah, but it was so important to get that win, wasn't it? Because obviously it was sold out away, and people have paid a lot of money to be there. Um, and the last game before Christmas, and I think it was the second of the three clean sheets in a row as well. Um, I saw a comment I wanted to actually just like mention if I could, because somebody like Ryan put in the chat saying Colin Calder has been a massive factor in our improved defensive performances. And I asked Russell Martin about that, and obviously it's um, it's not a coincidence completely. He came in at a time when uh, those, those sort of performances started to improve. But Russell did say that he's actually not doing like five days a week at the moment. He's still sort of assessing some of it from afar. He isn't really getting much training ground time with the players as of about a week or two ago. I mean, most sort of advising the staff on a few things. Um, but he is there now. He's sort of helped take over on set pieces as well since um, Andreas George is in. So I think you have to give him credit for, for what he's done. But um, I think it is a little bit reductionist to sort of give uh, Colin all of the praise. But yeah, sure, welcome addition. Yeah, I mean, I I thought the defence tightened up a little bit. It was, um, it was unfortunate that James Bree got injured. But I think mm. it helped a little bit with Kyle switching over to... Ilias Chair's side, he seemed to shut him down a little bit. But uh, no, I thought that win was massively important for the um, for the fact that we was it drawn three away games in a row, and it was it might well have it, been, yeah. you know it was it was nice to get over the line yeah. in one. 